After so many years of sluggish growth, we're finally starting to see some economic data that can provide a glimmer of hope. The uptick, the uptick appears to coincide with the biggest political change of the Obama administration's long tenure in Washington, the expectation of a new Republican Congress. Okay, welcome back to The Ed Show tonight. Finally, this is a story for the folks who take a shower after work. You have to take a shower after that comment for sure. Mitch McConnell hasn't even logged a week as Senate Majority Leader, and he's already taken credit for a rebounding economy. It's no surprise given the latest numbers. Where are the jobs? Here are the jobs. The U.S. economy added 252,000 more jobs in December. Big pops across the board, professional and business services, plus 52,000, construction up 48,000. These are well-paying jobs that are good middle-class jobs. We've seen a record 58 months of private sector job growth, a total of 11.2 million jobs added to the economy. That's the longest stretch in our history of private sector uninterrupted job creation. The unemployment rate ticked down to 5.6%, the lowest since June of 2008. We haven't seen this unemployment rate decline since 1983-84. With the unemployment rate coming down to 5.6%, you're getting to full employment. We've added almost 3 million jobs in the year 2014, the strongest job growth since 1999. The unfinished business is to make sure that the prosperity that we see across America is shared prosperity. And a surging stock market and low gas prices spur greater economic growth. America's resurgence is real. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I'm joined tonight by Leo Hendry, junior managing partner at Intermedia Partners and former president and CEO of AT&T Broadband. Also with us tonight, Congresswoman Rosa DeLara of Connecticut. Great to have both of you with us. Mr. Hendry, you. you first. Are these numbers real? Well, I think they're real in the aggregate. As Congresswoman DeLora will tell you, Ed, there, there's, there's a dark side to those numbers. Of the 252,000, only 17,000 were in manufacturing. Of all of the jobs created in 14, which is so laudable, more than 90% were in services. Nobody has done a better job of protecting the manufacturing base of this country than the Congresswoman and Congressman John Garamendi, who was on your show a bit earlier. What, we're, what we've done is we've forgotten quality. We've forgotten wage growth along with job growth. 90% of American workers, Ed, have had no real wage increase since 1967. And as the Congresswoman can articulate better than I, we're looking at some trade agreements down the road here, if, if, if they push them forward, mm -hmm. that'll further eviscerate the manufacturing base of the country. Rosa, what about that? Uh, on the verge of fast track and possibly TPP, would this unravel a lot of the numbers we just talked about? Well, first of all, you know, I think we, we, uh, we applaud the numbers, the 252,000. Uh, you know, we're excited about that. But I think that Leo is, is absolutely right. The dark side of that is that wages uh, are stagnant. And if you take a look at what has been the, the most serious economic challenge that we face in this country today, and that is people are not being paid enough on their jobs. Uh, wages are stagnant, and uh, their people are living on the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, so that if you then move forward with a trade agreement, uh, as has been uh, proposed by the administration, that you will see what has happened in the past uh, with trade agreements is in that the serious loss of those manufacturing jobs. The president... My state of Connecticut has lost manufacturing jobs as a result of NAFTA. And when you think about what will happen with this 12-nation uh, a, a trade agreement. Yeah. Congresswoman, the president wants a jobs package. Will the Republicans try to get good while the going's good and, and get in this game? Uh, well, you know, look, the, the people who are uh, uh, either out of work or have taken work that pays only two-thirds of what they were making before, and that's absolutely true in manufacturing, you know, that's not just a democratic issue. This is something that's happening all over the country. It would be my hope that they would understand mm -hmm. that it is important. And they have not put forward a jobs bill. Uh, they continue to say that, uh, but it is not the case. And that's what we need to do. But it is the increased wages that is critical. Yeah. Important uh, Leo, today. what would be a good jobs package at this point? Well, the most immediate jobs package would uh, would be back off of these trade agreements and and really understand what they might do to employment in America, which is is negative. But where the congresswoman is so articulate is an infrastructure bill 
would satisfy both sides of the aisle. It would res resuscitate the manufacturing sector like no other single action and would go a long, long way to pushing these rates of wages back to levels that are acceptable. Do you think, and, go ahead, Congresswoman, your thoughts well, on that? Well, I was just going to say is, and, and uh, Leo, I thank you for mentioning infrastructure. I introduced the National Infrastructure Bank back in, uh, you know, 1994, 1995. And this would seem to be a place where we could come together as Democrats and, and Republicans. Okay. And look what the Europeans do and what, and, and, and looking at how infrastructure can play. And these jobs can't be outsourced. Well, when, which, when, when you talk about the economy, the first thing the Republicans jump at is the corporate tax rate. Would there be a negotiating point for the Democrats to lower the corporate tax rate to get a jobs package, Rosa? Well, I, I think, look, people are willing to talk about this, but that's not where the, 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 the tax, uh, tax reform has to occur at a variety of levels. It's not all one-sided, which is, I believe, where my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to, uh, okay. want, want to see this. Mr. Hendry, your thoughts on the news that has been reported by CNBC now. They tweeted out that Mitt Romney right. met with some donors today in <clears throat> Manhattan and says that he's entertaining an idea 2016 to run to the White House. Your thoughts on that? I think I think Mitt would be a very credible candidate. I think he uh, he looks at this administration, wishes it had been his. Uh, in some senses, believes he could have campaigned differently to make it his. I think in Jeb Bush and, and Mitt Romney, you you will have two very very credible, articulate uh, Republicans. Uh, but I think the congresswoman is right. This one's going to be decided purely at the middle class level, right. who speaks mm -hmm. to them best about wage improvement, about job improvement. We have eight plus million women and men today, Ed, who are part time of necessity to the Congresswoman's point, can't find full time employment. I, I look forward to 16. If, if, if we rehash the past, I don't look forward to it. If we and really if, get to the middle class, I, I very much look forward to it. Okay. And in, in terms of that corporate tax reform, where are the opportunities for the middle class? Okay. Leo Hendry and Congresswoman Rosa DeLora, appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much. That's The Ed Show. I'm Ed Schultz, Politics Nation, with Reverend Al Sharpton starts right now. Good evening, Rev. Good evening.